In a previous video, I talked about attributes and I showed how to set attributes using the config colon colon set method. Uh, I want to note that we actually didn't need to have a separate function for this uh, to schedule it. We needed to, to set the attribute for UDB echo client right after that client was actually created. Otherwise, it will not set it because it will not find any matching UDB echo clients to set the values for. Okay, now we're, talk, we're going to talk about trace sources. What are trace sources? Trace sources are set and accessible like a, uh, are accessible just like an attribute with the path, with the same matching rules. Uh, let's look at UDB echo client and see if we have trace sources. Uh, we can actually look at all trace sources and attributes over here. So this is the industry documentation. And I can go to UDB echo client. And you can see this is, for example, the interval, the max packets, attributes. We can look at trace sources and UDB echo client. As we can see, there is a TX trace source, RX, TX with addresses, RX with addresses. So these are events that are fired uh, by the simulation, by, by whoever designed UDB echo client class. We look at UDB echo client class, we'll look at how attributes are added, like I showed you earlier, but also how trace sources are added also within get type ID. Now we could see here, let me look at TX. So this trace gives you packet. So, so basically you need to have a function. Uh, it has this callback. So you need to have a function that takes as a parameter pointer const packet, just like that. All right. Now I didn't do these two. I went with, with two addresses. So this one with two addresses has packet pointer const address by reference and another const address by reference. Notice that when we create a callback function, it has to match the signature exactly. You have to have the and, the const, otherwise it may give you a runtime error. And this type, this instance variable is defined in the UDB echo client. It's somewhere here, right? So you could see it defined here. Um, and the, the type though is under packet. So this is the, the type of the callback to addresses traced callback, which is defined in packet. Doesn't matter where it where it is defined, it's it's a public property that you can access. As you can see, this here is packet traced callback, and this is used all over NS3, uh, the one with only packet. But these are more meaningful to us, so let's use these ones. I'm gonna go back to my first example, and I'm going to uncomment these two lines and explain them. As you can see, we access Rx with addresses and Tx with addresses. Those are these two trace sources right here. We access those, and then we have to create a function, Rx trace and Tx trace, or whatever you want to call it, and use the make callback to make it a callback. Uh, if we if I highlight this, you could see that the first parameter is a string, and then we match the rest of the signature uh, as the callback. The reason why the first parameter is string is that the context string is what matches this thing. So this will be zero or one, depending on what nodes have matched matched this criteria. And similarly with TX trace. Now this Rx trace and Tx trace are uh, basically event fired by UDB echo client. So these are application level traces. And if I if I do this, if I go to Rx trace, um, what I have here is basically I'm printing the size of the packet, and I'm going to convert the address uh, to IP version four. So from will be the address and um, Local address is usually 0 .0 0 .0 0.0.0.0, zeros. This depends on how NS3 uh, defined, uh, created that callback. So I believe it uses the local address, uh, local IP addresses assumed to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? 
usually it's the you know catch all uh, address thingy. Uh, so so let's run this, and I should get the size of the packets. And uh, so oh, my packets will be one zero two four because because that's how we created our simulation. We said that packet size is one zero two four. Now let's try to find other traces, things to trace. Uh, we can trace at the device level. So this is the device, point-to-point -point net device that is used in first tutorial, in the necessary tutorials. We have here MacTX and MacRx, and this takes this trace callback that only have a packet pointer const and I have it here so that we can neatly access it. And let me just remove these, uh, uh, comment this out. Mac TX trace. So we go to a list of nodes, all the nodes, and then device list. And remember, we have application list and the device list, all devices, and do the Mac TX and link it to this function we created in this file. Similarly, with Mac RX. Uh, if we run this, now the code I have here, basically I also print the packet size, but I should expect a larger packet size. Now also printing the time. The reason why I expect a larger packet size is because uh, it has the additional headers, the UDP uh, header, IP header, and the Ethernet header, or point-to-point -point protocol header, the, the data link header. You can see the packet size here is 1054 as opposed to 1024. So there is a, uh, was it 34 extra bytes in there? Uh, 14 is Ethernet and 20 is IP, I believe. Um, we have here an PPPP header size 2. So I'm going to look here into this Mac RX trace and I'm uh, it's here, Mac RX trace is this function. So basically, um, I could check for headers by specifying creating a, a header like this, empty header, and then peek that header. If it's successful, it means it exists. If it's not, it means it doesn't exist. And it gives me, it gave me two here. Let me try to say Ethernet instead. Ethernet header. Because um, if I do Ethernet header and let me see what's the get size or get serialized size. Yeah. I don't think it has Ethernet, but actually it does give me the Ethernet header size as 14. Uh, okay. So this is about tracing. Um, you. It gets more complex, complex, complex. Uh, let's comment this out and let me show you another thing. Uh, I'm going to use device as well. There are attributes in the device. This attribute is TXQ. So the type of TXQ is a Q object. So the TXQ. If I go to uh, point to point net device. Now let me look at the document point to point net device. And uh, point to point net device. Okay. I'm going to look at the code. So I have to click here, look for get type ID. I'm going to show you that this is TXQ, right? So this type is Q. Q has within it attributes and also trace sources like in Q, DQ, drop, drop before in Q. This is usually an event that happened if you try to in Q a packet and the packet is full. Therefore, it's going to drop it before it even in Q it. And this is drop after DQ. I believe this is if you DQ a packet because it exceeded its time. I'm not sure exactly if that's how it is, uh, but those are the events that could fire. So now I can use, go through the device through the TXQ attribute and then through these, through to these uh, 
what do you call these things, uh, trace sources. And as you can see here, I've done just that in this example. So we're going to go to node list, star, all the nodes, all the devices, the TXQ. So this will only match. We only have one, two devices and two machines. So they are all both point to point. And so we match the attribute. And then from there, we keep going to the trace sources of these attributes. So since it's a queue, we can link this to queue trace. Now the callback is the same as before the MACTX. And the DQ trace is here. And so basically every time I enqueue a, a packet, I basically fire an event. I have some control to do this. I'm going to just print the time and the size of the packet that was enqueued. The packet that is enqueued includes all the headers that are actually attached to the packet. So that's, that's how it's done. And it will be 1054. As you can see here, we have three packets enqueued, dequeued immediately. So there is no delay in the queuing. And then the server receives it. This is node one. The server receives it. And at this time, uh, sorry, it receives it and then enqueues the response. So uh, I don't have the Rx here to, to show me more detail. There is a, if there is a time gap. So, and then I dequeued it immediately. As you can see, we enqueue and dequeue very quickly, uh, very uh, like so that there is no queuing delay. Let us just uh, play with it a little bit. Let us just enqueue packets so rapidly. So every uh, 100 microseconds in this case. So that's 100 microseconds. So the time value can be like this, or I could just say, microsecond 100 okay did i match okay and now let us do this now i should expect some queuing delay as packet will be enqueued faster than the transmission rate now the first packet is enqueued and dequeued immediately because no one is there uh, in the packet but now we enqueue the second packet and also the third packet, and then they have to wait. So this is what happened to the second packet. As we can see, it get dequeued, meaning it's transmission initiated, and, and then gets dequeued. Uh, the third packet gets dequeued from the packet after it's been. So we could, if we calculate this value and this value, this is the delay for the second, uh, third packet. And from here to here is the delay of the second packet. And this is what happened at the server. The server starts replying because it receives the first packet at this time. So right after it have the, 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 um, the uh, sender already began transmission of its three packets. So we can do manipulate these numbers and estimate uh, the, like something like a queuing delay, right? It gets more interesting, but I'll leave this at here. I mean, there are examples with Wi-Fi where this string is actually longer because we need to match certain devices. And I'm sure you're going to be running simulations that have maybe LTE and and uh, uh, and maybe Wi-Fi or WAVE, which is wireless access and vehicular environment. So it's really good to understand how to access the path. The problem here is that you have to match this path and the checking is not that good basically if this function signature is incorrect let me go there if this function signature is incorrect let's say mac rx trace i'm gonna just mess it up by ha having some extra parameter right so this doesn't match uh what was it what was it then? I I forgot which one I did. Uh, Mac RX trace, right? Uh, let me do uh, instead. Let me do DQ trace because I don't want to like uh, in Q trace or DQ trace the last one. Okay. So now, because this path is correct. But this callback is doesn't have the proper signature. I'm gonna get an error message. 
which says I got this signature, which is stray, uh, return type void, uh, string as the first argument, second argument is packet, and the last argument is unsigned integer. But instead, it was expecting this signature, which is string followed by packet, and that's all. The problem is, if this thing doesn't match, then basically it will basically simply not connect and not give you any error. So it may need you to play with it a little bit because it's not that straightforward. As you can see, it simply just didn't connect the DQ trace. But uh, yeah, DQ trace. Now, uh, there is a method uh, called uh, set attribute fail safe. That's useful for setting attributes. So, uh, and uh, basically, uh, set attribute. Uh, yeah, so set default fail safe, but that works for that setting a default fail safe because uh, it returned boolean, so you could you could see if it connected or not with the boolean. But that's for another day. Uh, I hope you find this very useful. Very important to understand your trace sources in NS3 and how to utilize all the trace sources in the different component and classes of NS3 because that will make your life easier. And um, also, as a good advice, be good with C++ because that helps a lot. Um, thank you. Uh, leave a thumbs up and uh, ask any question if you're if you're having trouble with uh, certain things, or just to go to the NS3 user group. I sometimes answer some questions there that I, if I know how to answer them. Uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good one.